In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about quadratic word problems, maximizing revenue. So let's take a look at our first problem here. Uh, we have Max here, and Max is selling CDs in the mall. Max is selling these CDs for $20 each, and he wants to know, um, at this price, he sells an average of 280 CDs a day. So what's going on here is at, at $20 a CD, uh, he knows that he can sell about 280 a day. Um, now, the other thing he does know is that every time Max increases the price by 50 cents, he's going to lose five sales for that day. The question here becomes, is what price should Max sell these CDs to maximize your revenue? So in this situation here, you have a sort of like a fixed cost of $20 per CD and you know at that price uh, you can sell 280 CDs in that day. You've also observed maybe over time that as you increase that price by even 50, even a 50 cent interval, you're going to lose five sales that day. So what you want to do for this question here is you want to, fig you want to figure out what price should I sell these CDs at to maximize my revenue. And the idea behind this is that it is not always the case that the highest price is going to generate the most revenue, and it's not the case that the cheapest price is going to generate the most revenue. A lot of times it's something in between. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to let X equal the number of 50 cent increases or decreases. And by that, I mean here, for example, just what I mean by that variable here is that X equals zero would represent that we did not change the price at all. It would be $20. If I let X be one, it would mean we'd increase the price by 50 cents. If X is two, then we'd increase the price by two increments of 50 cents. So the new price of CD would be $21. Likewise, if we go in the negative direction, now we decrease the price by 50 cents. So the CD would be 1950 and I'm sure you're getting the hang of this now. The CD would now go down to $19. Okay, but what's important here is this is what X is representing, the number of 50 cent increases. Okay, so what we want to do in this situation is we want to create our revenue relation here, right? I want to maximize that so I have to figure out what does the revenue relation look like? Well, the revenue of anything that you have here is going to be equal to price per unit, right? Like what are you charging? For what the object that you're selling and then how many of them do you s intend to sell so number of units sold how many of them do you intend to sell but how can i represent the price per unit well what do i know i know that if i charge twenty dollars i'm going to sell 280. now what would happen here if i put in a plus 50x what would that represent well what that would represent here is that if if you take a look here what that would represent here is if i let x equal one that would mean i'm increasing the price by 50 cents well if i'm increasing the price by 50 cents i know i'm going to lose so i have to change the number of units to a minus five units times one or in this case times x now watch what happens if I let x be 2 here. Suppose we change that x to a 2. If x is 2, I've now increased the price by 2 increments of 50 cents. Which as we know, every time you increase the price by 50 cents, you lose 5 units. Well, if you take a look here, at this value here, when I let x equal 2, it's going to output a 280 minus 5 times 2 is going to be 270. Likewise, if I let x be 3, we take a look here. If I let x be 3, now what we're doing is we're decrease, or increasing the price, I should say, by 3 increments of 50 cents. Well, as we know, every time you increase the price, you lose 5 sales. So we should this equation should generate a loss of 15 sales. Well, if I sub this into my equation, change that x to a 3, you get 280 minus 15 is, in fact, 265. And now we've lost 15 units. So the idea here is that these two equations, the one I have on the right-hand side here and the one we have on the left-hand side here, work hand-in-hand. Hand. Notice if I let x be negative, so now we're decreasing the price 
well if i decrease the price by 50 cents i'm i need i need this price to represent $19.50 well notice here if i put in a negative 1 we get 20 minus 0.5 and you actually uh, do get that 1950 that you want to represent well if this equation is in fact true if i let x be negative 1 here i need to get an increase of 5 people or 5 cd sales well if you notice here the two minus signs become positive, and in fact, this actually does go up to 285. So you can see these equations work hand in hand in that if I increase the price by 50 cents here, I'm going to lose five sales every time. And likewise, if I decrease the price by 50 cents here, I'm going to gain five sales every time. So it's, it is true to say that um, this revenue relationship is represented by our equation here. Now, what's important here is that this is actually a quadratic. Notice if I were to expand this out using FOIL, your leading coefficient of this would be negative. And because the leading coefficient is negative, I know that this quadratic is going, going to open downwards. If the quadratic opens downwards, that means it hits a maximum. That maximum, you guessed it, is my max revenue. So I want to be able to find this uh, max revenue here. Since it's a quadratic, well, what I can do here is I can go ahead and find my roots, average them out, get the middle, and you've got yourself your uh, vertex, i.e. your max revenue. So what are my roots? I'm going to take my revenue relation and set it equal to zero. Again here, this is already factored. So it's very common uh, that students want to expand this all out. You do not have to expand it out here because it's already factored. So I have the product of two expressions is zero. Either this expression is zero or this one is zero. So I need to set uh, both of these equal to zero and solve, and those will give me my two roots. All right, so solving for x here, we're going to get here what 0 0.05x equals negative 20, x equals negative 40 in this case here, and then solving for x on the other side, we end up getting x equals 56. So we have two roots here. One root is 56, uh, and the other root here is negative 40. So I have a root here at negative 40, Another root at 56. Averaging these out here, uh, you're going to get negative 40 plus 56 divided by 2 ends up being 8. So that means that's my vertex. That's the ideal um, value. This is our value that's going to give max revenue. Now, th that doesn't mean the maximum revenue is 8. What does the x-axis represent here? Well, my x-axis represents number of 50 cent in this case increases so really to generate max revenue what we need to do here is if i want to find the actual price i have to sub that into my actual equation here so in this case here recall my revenue relation is composed of two products one is the price per unit and the other is the number of units sold these are all connected uh, with the variable x well we just found what the x value was the ideal x value is eight the uh, value of x that maximizes revenue is eight so in this case here the uh, price per unit that we should be selling the CDs at is going to be 20 plus 0.5 times 8 is 20 plus 4 is $24. So it turns out the CDs were actually uh, undervalued. Max was selling them too cheaply and wasn't maximizing his profit. And now uh, the number of units sold, number of units sold here is going to be 280, you're going to lose some sales, uh, and that's okay, because your overall profit is going to be maximized. So in this case here, you're going to sell 240 CDs instead of the 280, but you'll still maximize profit, or in this case, revenue. My revenue, in this case, is now going to equal 24 times 240, $5,760. So now notice here, what was Max originally making? Well, Max originally, in the original problem when it started, Max was selling the CDs for $20 each, but he sold 280 of them. Notice this value is going to come up to be less. If you go ahead and calculate that, you get $5,600. So notice here, by increasing the price of the CDs, resulting in less sales, resulting in less sales, you still maximize your revenue. Uh, and that was the goal. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Okay, so for the next problem here, we have a city bus company. 
uh, usually transports 12,000 riders on their bus every day. Uh, they find that at the price that they're charging per ticket to do that is a one dollar. So they're charging a dollar to do this, and at at a dollar they generate about twelve thousand sales and riders. The company wants to increase prices. They don't, and they want. They know. The company wants to increase ticket prices, and what they know is that every time they increase the prices by ten cents, they find out that they actually lose four hundred customers. What the company wants to know is. What price should the company sell their ticket so that they can maximize revenue? Okay, well, same idea here. We need to create a revenue relation. So what am I going to do? I'm going to let X equal the number of 10 cent increases or decreases, just like we did in the previous example. Okay, that'll be the way you start these revenue uh, questions. So I need to create a revenue relation. Well, your revenue relation, just like before, is going to be represent what? Well... It's going to be represented by uh, the price of a ticket multiplied by uh, the number of tickets that you will sell at that price. Well, what's my base case? What's sort of what we're starting off with? Well, they told me that um, at a dollar a ticket, so one, I'm going to sell 12,000 tickets so if, I, if I charge a dollar per ticket. Well, what do we know? I know that if I increase the price... By 10 cents, every factor of, of 10 cents here, actually going to lose, so I change that to a minus, 400 riders. And again, notice this illustrates the relationship between increasing the price and then decreasing the number of tickets sold, right? And the reason for that is you can sub in some values and see, right? If I let X be, let's say in this case here, I let X be 1. Now you'll notice here, if you sub a 1 into my uh, relationship on the left-hand side, we're going to get dollar ten per ticket. Well, I know uh, from the question itself that if I increase the price by ten cents, that's going to result in a loss of four hundred. Well, go to my second equation, and you let x be one here. Yep, we're down to eight hundred people, so we've now effectively lost four hundred customers. Likewise, if I let x be negative one here, now I'm decreasing the price per ticket. Now, sub that into my equation. You guys will see the ticket prices are now $0.90 cents each. And um, as expected here, I should gain customers. And in fact, you do. If I let X be negative 1, we end up getting 12,400 uh, riders in this case here. So you can see that it represents every time I increase by $0.10, cents, I lose 400 cu customers. And every time I decrease by $0.10, cents, I increase by 400 customers. So at any rate here, now what we have is we have our revenue relation. My revenue relation can be expressed as the following. This is a quadratic. This quadratic opens downwards, and we want to maximize revenue. Well, that's my vertex. I need to find that. The easiest way to find that is to find your roots. The reason for that is my quadratic is already in factored form. So I'm going to set my revenue relation equal to 0. And if I set my revenue relation equal to zero again commonly students want to expand this out you do not have to expand it out it's already in factor form S just like we did before set each of the products equal to zero and solve so if i set this equal to zero and solve here i end up getting x equals negative 10 and here i get solving for this divide across by negative 400 you end up getting three so the two roots that I get here are uh, negative 10 and 3. Notice, I just wanted to point this out here, these values here are the absolute worst values you could sell your tickets for. This value right here would represent an increase of 3 increments of 10 cents. And uh, what we're seeing here is that if you increase the price of tickets to $1.30, you actually have no customers, you make no revenue. Likewise, if I decrease the price of the tickets, by 10 increments of 10 cents, essentially the tickets are being sold for free and you'll also have no revenue. In the middle lies the sweet spot where your maximum revenue occurs. So to find that here, like we've done before, you have to average these out. So add up your roots, divide by two. Uh, you end up getting here negative three and a half. So that is not the price per ticket. That's the number of 10 cent, in this case, 10 cent decreases as it is negative. So if I want to go ahead and find out what is the price of this ticket, what we're going to do here, 
Uh, the price per ticket, as you know, is going to be represented by what we have here, a dollar plus 0.10x. So it's going to be a dollar plus 0.10 times negative three and a half. And this ends up being a dollar minus 0 0.35. And these tickets should be selling for 65 cents in order to maximize my revenue. Continuing on with this question here, we want to take a look at the numbers of sales. So how many sales would this generate? Well, in this case here, you take your 12,000 minus 400, and now you're putting in a minus three and a half. You're actually going to end up having 13,400 riders. So now my max re revenue here is going to be represented by the product of these two. So it's going to be 65 cents times 13,400, and that comes out to be $8,710. So that means here, and if the bus company wants to maximize revenue, they should actually decrease the price of the tickets to 65 cents. That'll generate an extra 1,400 riders, and therefore you maximize your revenue at $8,710. Okay, that concludes today's lesson on maximizing revenue with quadratic equations. Uh, feel free to watch the other two videos if you haven't seen them. They'll be at the end of the video here. You can watch them. One is on motion of objects and the other is on uh, maximizing area with fencing problems.